Today is a big day for Dawson. This is something he's been anticipating for many months and it's finally arrived. <laughs> he gets a dirt jumper. Specialized P3. You excited, buddy? Oh, yeah. <laughs> All right, let's pull it out. <laughs> it's coming together. Dawson is quite stoked about this bike. Well, we've got this bike almost done, but we ran into a snag, which I'm really not happy about. So there's play in the headset. So if you rock the bike back and forth, you can definitely feel the play in the headset. Well, here's the problem. Specialized left the fork like one or two millimeters too long. So when you tighten the top cap, you cannot compress the headset all the way. Normally, what you would do is just add a spacer, but the front brake cable goes through the top cap. So in order to add a spacer, you would have to cut the brake line because the compression nut has to come off and you know the olives up here. So you have to cut the brake line, uh, which means bleeding the brakes and all that and putting a new hose barb and everything on. So we're going to try a little hack here. We're going to try to make a spacer with a split in it. We're going to take a hacksaw to a spacer as our dog paces around the garage in the thunderstorm. <laughs> what are you doing? You want to go inside? Yeah, you want to go inside? So our hope is to be able to make a spacer that will be able to you know, go around the brake cable so we don't have to <laughs> undo the brake cable. The other thing that we thought about doing is taking a tube cutter and trying to shorten the fork maybe a couple millimeters. But you do have the, uh, the star fangled nut inside there. So we're going we're gonna to try the hacksaw trick first. But, I, you know, honestly, I'm a little disappointed with Specialized. I'm kind of surprised they would have a fork uh, that was cut a little too long. Major, major oversight, in my opinion. All right, so we've got a spacer in the bench vise, and we're going to take a hacksaw, see if we can put a little split in this. I hope this works. Well, that was easy to split. It's going to work. Let's put it down one here. Oh, we got it on there. Sweet. That's literally a bike hack. Before Dawson takes flight on this thing, I wanted to show it up close. I'm actually not going to be the one reviewing this bike. I'm gonna let Dawson review it because he's the dirt jumper. But we wanted to do a first look on this bike like I typically do in my videos so you can see it in case you're interested. First of all, what we did with the headset did work. So the headset is tight. If you get one of these, check that out. Hopefully you won't have the same issue of the steerer tube being left a little bit too long, but what we did work. So as you can see, the front brake goes in through the top cap and that's so that you can do bar spins. And then of course, the front brake cable comes out the bottom of the fork, which is pretty cool. And then it's got an extra long rear brake cable. So Dawson has wrapped it around the head tube so you can do uh, you know bar spins. So you would just reverse it. And then when you do your bar spin, it would unravel. So a very short seat. It's like a BMX bike, you know, you don't really use the seat. Of course, it is a single speed and it's got some pretty cool sliders. So it's got a chain tensioner built in, just a bolted rear axle because you don't have to worry about changing a flat on a dirt jumper. You would just have to take a wrench to it. But I like these sliders. So you can use this chain, ten chain tensioner and then tighten up the sliders. We did put a chain stay protector on it. Our very own beautiful inner tube chain stay protector. The front is a through axle and you have to use a six millimeter Allen wrench. The front and the rear rotors are 160s and it's got Tektro brakes so it's not super high end brakes on this bike. It does use mineral oil though which is really nice. Looking at the brake calipers up close they'll do the job. I mean braking performance isn't something that's really important on a dirt jumper. Dirt jumpers usually come in two sizes so we got the large since Dawson's growing like a weed. He's about 5'10 right now and growing about an inch a month. The tires are the Specialized Renegade Slope Style. Being a dirt jumper, of course, this is a 26er. The stickers on this bike are super cool. A colored metallic look to them. The riser bar on this bike we measured to be 760. And the fork on this bike is a Manitou Circus. 
and it's got a coil spring that is super stiff. This is not built for trail riding. This is built for dirt jumping and you want it super stiff so you can pop off the jump. The rear brake cable, by the way, just routes underneath the top tube over here. So really basic, really simple aluminum frame. This bike does come with a derailleur hanger in the box. So if you ever wanted to convert this into a geared dirt jumper, you could do so. So Dawson weighed this bike and it came in at 27 and a half pounds, just in case you're curious. So that's a first look at the Specialized P3. And like I said, Dawson's going to be reviewing this and I'll get some video of him jumping on this thing. Since it's too wet to jump, Dawson is practicing his tricks on the scooter in the driveway.